Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. Today our readings um, tie in pretty well together on this theme of really learning to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And so we have today through this testing of the Pharisees of Jesus, uh, reminding us the, the top two commandments, but also then reminding us how Jesus has changed that second one. So these two commandments, these are the, the two greatest commandments. They summarize the whole law and the prophets, meaning they sum, if you live them, you're, you're, you're living as a good Old Testament Jew. Now, if you want to live as a New Testament Christian, You've got to switch that second commandment to what Jesus gave us, right? Jesus, he said, basically said, no longer love your neighbor as yourself. Now Jesus gave a new commandment I give to you. Love one another as I love you. Now that should sound crazy to us because, right, Jesus is God and man, man and God. He's the God man. So he's saying love as God loves. Just as God loves you, love one another. So no longer are you, or is it acceptable for the Christian to have merely a human love. Now we must have God's own love for each other. And so that's, that's our, our rule of life and our measure for everything we do. And sometimes if we're wondering, well, what would God do? What would Jesus do? Or how would God love? You know, we say, well, how is, how is Jesus loving me? How has he loved me in the past? How would I want God to love me in this situation? So we have to learn to, this is part of the new mindset, we have to learn to apply this. It's a new law, a new commandment because there's a new law. So loving our, the Lord our God with our heart, mind, soul, and strength and loving our neighbor as ourself summarizes the Old Testament law and the prophets, but this new law of following the Holy Spirit in our life has this new commandment. Love one another as I love you. So we have to apply that in our life in many different ways. You know, simply somebody, people are asking me for things. Well, how should I respond? Well, how do I want God to respond to me when I ask him for things? That that's how I need to respond to other people when they're asking me for things. When, if I need, somebody's asking for forgiveness or mercy or help, well, how do I want God to respond to me when I ask for forgiveness, mercy, or help? And then that's how I need to respond to the, the people around me. I cannot expect God to give me mercy if I'm not giving other, somebody else mercy. I cannot expect God to answer my petitions and prayers generously if I'm not answering other people's petitions generously. If I'm saying no to other people and closing off, then I should expect that God will say no to me and close, close me off. Whatever I'm withholding from another person, I should expect God would withhold from me. In fact, Jesus teaches this uh, when he says he's teaching the Our Father, and soon after he says, if you do not forgive your brother from your heart, my Father will not forgive you. In other words, so whatever measure he says you're giving out, that's the measure that will be given to you by God. So if you want God to be generous with you, you better start being generous with everybody else in every aspect of your life. Learning to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, um, heart, soul, and mind today, there's a pattern in the scriptures that we see both Old Testament and New Testament for living this out. And it has to do with leaving everything behind for God. We can go back to Abraham, our first father in faith. And God came to him and said, Abraham, leave your, your father's house, leave all these things behind, leave your home, leave the land that you're familiar with, and leave everything behind and go to a place that I will show you. And we don't have much story in Isaac, but we know Jacob also had to leave everything behind and go live with his sister, sister's uh, brother, Laban. And after many years came back, was, not, was able to finally come back, but he had to leave 
everything, his family, his mom, his house, everything he knew, his different friends, and go start over. And Moses had to do the same thing when we get into the book of Exodus. Moses grew up in Pharaoh's household, didn't even get to know his own biological mom. And then at, when he was older, he had to leave Pharaoh's household and go start all over. <laughs> and then once he had built another life out in the desert and got a wife and some kids, God said, go and leave all that and go back to Pharaoh and get my people out of there. And there's many more examples throughout the Old Testament leading us up to Jesus. God who left heaven to come to earth to be with us. Jesus who set aside his divinity to take on humanity and show us how to live as a human being supposed to. And then Jesus, every time he called his disciples, we see their response is emphasized. They left everything and followed him. They left everything and followed him. That other Old Testament example, which I already skipped in my mind, but from our first reading, Ruth. Another example, Ruth leaving everything. Her land, her home, her family, her friends, everything, she, her, even her God, to go and, and, and stay and basically go and have a new God. Live with Naomi, live with her family, her house, her land, her God, start all over. It's a pattern, and, and it's the pattern of what Jesus taught us. When we leave something behind for another person, it's basically like Jesus said, laying down our life for someone else. It's the greatest act of love. It's the greatest way we can love God with all of our heart, mind, and soul. To leave things behind, to lay down our life for him. What have you left behind for God? Have you left anything behind for God? Have you had to leave family to follow God in your life? Have you had to leave a land, a home, a job, friendships to follow God and his truth and things he's asking you to do? What have you, what have you had to leave behind for God? What have you had to lay down? What desires have you had? What dreams have you had that you've had to lay down? Sometimes we have to let, leave behind old mindsets to follow a new way of thinking. Old habits to begin a new lifestyle with Jesus. Have to leave behind old comforts. Jesus is always asking us to get out of our comfort zone and follow him. What's he asking you to leave behind today? To lay down today so you can love him with more of your heart, more of your soul, and more of your mind. Jesus, we just ask you to make it very clear to us this next step that you want us to take to love you more. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Let us stand together and offer some more prayers to our Father. <laughs>